Hi, my name is Jessica Burrell and I'm with Capture Dental Arts and today we're going to show you a new product brought to you by Desktop Health called Flexera. Flexera offers a new printed resin for printing dentures and today I'm going to show you how we customize dentures to make them look more natural. Smile design is really important to us at Capture Dental Arts and those of you that know us know we want them to look as natural as possible. So today we're going to take you through step by step on how to customize and emphasize the natural characteristics on a printed denture. Thank you for joining us and let's go. So we're gonna show a couple ways how to customize the dentures. And one of my favorite products that I like to use is a composite stain by Nexco. Nexco has a couple different colors of stain paste that we can easily blend on there or brush onto the denture and then we seal them or embed them with a resin over the top. This product, Nexco, is brought to you by Ivoclar Vivadent. They have multiple shades. You'll notice we have some orange and then we have some chili and some red. So I'm going to use a couple colors. I'm going to use first, this is the Nexco Chili. I'm going to squeeze a little bit out right here. Then we have some darker colors. If we need to get into a darker red, they've got another red here. I really like to use a little bit of the orange. If you apply the orange very thin, this next coat orange, it will warm up the tooth color just at the neck if you need to add a little more characterization. You can also use colors such as um, maroon or a mahogany if you need to add a little more warmth at the neck of the tooth. So I'm going to add just a little bit of the orange so you can see that color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this darker red. This is also the Nexco red. And I'll put them side by side so you can see the color difference. There's a couple ways you can apply this material to the denture. So I like to use just a fine brush. You can use a fine brush or we have other tools such as an explorer. You can use an explorer whatever works best for you. This material is very easy just to pick up and start to apply. So the basic rule with dentures and gingiva is that anywhere where it's concave, you're gonna to start to see a little more of the red or the veins that are underneath. You're gonna turn like this. And you're gonna to start to apply them and brush them into this space. You can also take some of these tools and try to drag them around and get some little veins in here if that's the effect that you're trying to go for. I'm really not um, that detailed because you'll see you really don't need a whole lot of detail when you're adding these, these colors, just a little bit. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the colors into all the concave areas, like so. I feel like the more random you are, the more natural it looks. Uh, we also have on our tissue a few bands so you can come in and brush just a little bit of a band and just start to blend this in. So next coat, it doesn't set up too fast, but once it is exposed to the light, it doesn't take long, maybe just a few minutes of working time is what you have. So you can come in, start to add your shading. You can add in some veins and then you can take the orange and warm up the neck of the tooth if you wanna warm it up just a little bit. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of the colors at the neck. You can keep your brush clean. And then just a little bit of this orange at the neckline so I can get a little bit of warmth. There's also some modeling liquid that you can do that comes with Nexco that you can thin these colors down so you have a little more control over application. Make sure you don't get the pink gingiva everywhere, the pink stain. I like to warm up the neck and in between the teeth just a little bit, clean off my brush so most of it's gone, and then just lightly blend this in. You can come in here and add a little more characterization if you want. Really whatever shade you're trying to achieve. So sometimes with printed dentures, it's difficult because we don't have all the shades that we need for printing. So if you need a darker shade, you can take some of the other colors like the Nexco um, maroon, some of these darker colors, these are really good for 5M1s, 5M3s, some of your C's and your D shade range. 
and take it over the entire surface of the tooth to warm that up. I do like to put just a hint of the orange up into the gingiva just so it looks a touch more natural and give a variety of color. So you're just blending these in. You want these to look more natural, make it look like there's some veins and some of the concavities, and then add some belts over the gingiva so it's got some variation and contour, add some shadows. And then once you're satisfied with the results, you can cure that on there or you can continue to play with it until you're happy. If you want to add even more sheeting just up at the top, that's where it gets darker. Sometimes you get some blue veins up in that area. You can add those in there if you want. I really don't get too crazy and I don't add a lot of staining over the border as you can see right here. So once that's done, I'm pretty satisfied with this. This is a bleach shade, so I don't want to get too crazy. I just warmed up the neck just a little bit. I'm going to cure this in place now. And depending on the strength of your curing light, you're just going to do anywhere from a 10 second to a 30 second cure to set everything in place. Our resins are a composite base, so the composite does adhere to them. Okay. And then once you have those colors on there and you're satisfied with the way it looks, you can see the difference between the two sides. Now we can take the resins themselves and start to customize with the resins. So the goal is to take the next co, place it internally, and then we can take the resins themselves that we print with and apply them over the top to seal in the Nexco composite stains. So I'm just adding a little bit of the resins into a well. I found this little container on Amazon, surprisingly, and it's got a lid that goes over the top of it that prevents it from curing. So it protects the material so it doesn't set up on you. And then that way you can place this lid over the top of it and leave it um, for however long, a couple days, weeks, whatever you need. So I've got my different colors of resin in here. Um, I'm going to go over the colors. I have a light pink here. We have original pink, medium pink, dark pink, and then we've got the Mahari. I also like to use a little bit of the tooth colored resin. This is an A2 of the Flexera tooth resin. And then that way, if I need to add a little bit of warmth, I can use the resin itself and brush it in at the neck or customize wherever I need to. Or if I'm adding color over the top, say I added the Nexco material at the neck, I want to seal the Nexco in there. So I'll use whatever color tooth color resin I want to go over the top of it to seal it in place. Um, one other option too that I didn't express it earlier is you can use blue. We have some blue stains if you want a little bit of blue translucency on the incisal of the tooth. That's an option. You can add a little blue. You can add a little bit of halo and then you can take a thin coat of the resin and place it over the top. So we're going to use these colored resins and we're going to apply them over the top of the denture to seal in all the stains that we just placed on there. It really doesn't matter what color. It's, you're placing these on there so thin, so it's not going to make a big difference. I'm going to start with the light pink, and I'm going to place a band of this light pink just right over the neck. I'm going to start to seal these colors in. One thing I like to do is don't place it everywhere just yet. There's a couple techniques you could use. One, you can take a little bit of resin and brush it over the entire surface so you know you have the stains all sealed in. You can do that, and then that way you know you have everything covered and then we can go in and start to customize and create all the character. Careful not to bring the resin in between the teeth too much, the gingiva colored resin. If you place the gingiva colored resin interproximally, it will start to make the teeth look like they're pink in between. So you want to make sure you try to keep those areas clean, keep your brush clean, and make sure you removed anything out of those areas. Now you'll notice this resin likes to slump, so you want to go back through right before you cure it, and quickly remove the resin around the neck of the tooth so you can keep all the detail and make sure it didn't slump in between the teeth. Once that's on there, you're going to cure that in place. So once again, you're just going to take this, place and brush that material all over the surface to make sure you've sealed the underlying Nexco in place. And then be careful and mindful that it didn't slump. You just want to remove any extra material around the neck 
and in between the teeth to make sure that it didn't slump in between the teeth. Okay, I'm gonna quickly remove any excess material around the neck. You need to work pretty fast and then I'm going to cure this in place. This material cures fast, another 10 to 30 seconds depending on your curing unit. Now a, fun, now a fun way to customize is you can add different characteristics now. So I can take the resin and start to build in different shapes and different details, but you have to work quick. So one thing I like to do is take and place an extra band over the neck of the tissue and then quickly cure that in place so I can add elevation. You can also add texture in here. I'll show you how to add a little bit of texture. So we're using the resin itself which means it's going to wear the same. We're not gonna get the difference in wear like we see when we're trying to place composite over the top of printed resins. We wanna be able to use the resin itself to customize and characterize. I can come in here too and add a little bit of stippling. Get this area elevated real quick. I'm going to use a little bit of the darker colors and now I can come in between and add a little bit of darker characteristics up here if I want. But before it cures, if I want a little bit of stippling in between, I can come in with my brush and quickly tap and add a little bit of texture in here. And before that resin sets up, I can hurry and come in here and cure it. You want to work fast before it slumps. Another trick is to set your curing unit on a stand and work underneath it and then that way you can go ahead and turn it on while it's on the stand and have both hands available to hurry and create the characteristics before the detail slumps everywhere. So that's pretty much how you create all the different characteristics. Um, I will go back over the tooth too. I'm not going to use this A2 resin because these are a little bit brighter. I'm going to go with my bleach shade and just seal over the top of them all the stain that I put in at the neck. But you can see the difference from printed versus customized and how you can really make these come to life. Once you're done and you're happy with them, we're gonna take this and put it into the curing unit. You can see here, here's just printed resin, and here's all the detail we can create when we customize. Got all the characteristics we can get in there. After you're all done applying the resin over the top of the next coat, you're going to place it into the curing unit. I like to use the auto flash on a thousand cures, or a thousand lights, you just lift up the lid. Place it in here and then go ahead and push start. If you're worried about it still being soft, take the denture and just flip it over and then cure it again for a thousand more. After you're done curing, uh, we wanna go ahead and polish it. And there's a couple different ways to polish. A lot of people like to put a topical application on. Um, there's some different products on the market like Glisten that's used for temporaries. There's also some products like Annex Dent that they have that's called Skin Glaze. So there's a couple different products on the market that you can use. And these products I don't really like to use because they wear off eventually. So the products I want to use is just polishing. I want to polish this, self-polish it, so then that way I know it's easy to just buff it back up in the patient's mouth and we don't have to worry about a topical polish or a topical application eventually wearing off. So if you don't like the resin, you can go ahead and take something like a fine diamond and come in and contour around the neck if you need to open it back up around the neck. If you need to come back in here and remove any resin that slumped into some of those areas that you don't like. Um, you can also come in and add a little bit of stippling or a little bit more detail if needed. I try to sculpt it exactly the way I want it to be. It always looks more natural when it's just flowed in with a brush. Okay. So a couple different tools we're going to use for polishing now. We have a couple different tools available. We've got a bunch of little burrs, we've got some fine diamonds, we've got some bristle brushes, and a cotton buff. Cotton buff is the main one that I'm going to use to really get a nice soft shine. You don't need to use something super aggressive. So if I do need to use something a little more aggressive, I'm going to go with a bristle brush. This is a goat hair bristle, bristle brush which you see here, and then I can go in with a cotton buff after. 
Uh, if you need to add a lot more texture, you can get into some of these texturing plastic um, bristle brushes. These are by Comet. But most of my stippling is just done by hand with the brush, so I usually don't need to use these. Try to keep it simple in your application. Also, there's a few different rubber wheels that you can get out there. This is a nice little tip that you can use if you need to contour just around the gingiva. So if you need to come in here and reshape around the gingiva, you can use it to reshape or re-sculpt. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to polish and I wanna show you the difference. You can use polishing paste, but they're not always necessary. But if you come in here and just really lightly start to polish, you'll see how you can get this shine on the fully cured printed denture. I can show you up here on the gingiva. And if you're not getting a nice shine like this, you didn't fully cure it. So put it back in the curing unit and cure it until you get this nice hard shine from a fully, a fully cured resin. You can see how that's starting to shine up. Coming in here and starting to polish this up. You don't need, your, at a, you don't need this at a high speed. So just take it easy. You don't need to push hard. Technicians have a tendency to grab this hand piece and start pushing really hard. You don't need to push hard. You don't need to go fast. Just really lightly come in here and start to polish these up and you'll start to get this really nice mechanical shine. You don't need the addition of a sealer or anything over it to really get this shiny. So take your time. If it's not working, like I said, just go back in and cure it more. It just means that your resin's not fully cured if you're not getting that same level of shine. And then you can come in with a cotton buff. And this cotton buff will take it to a higher shine. You can use your lathe. You can use a pumice polish on your lathe. But I feel like I really like the hand piece better. The hand piece lets me get into some of those grooves and really work in between the teeth without wearing down the texture of the tooth itself. And then you can polish it up to whatever desired shine or sheen that you feel that patient would prefer. I usually do like to get them to a higher shine in the beginning. And then if the patient comes back in later on and needs a touch up, all you have to do is just take this cotton buff and go back in and add a really nice shine, just polish it up. They're pretty easy maintenance. One thing I like about this material is if the patient chips a tooth, it's really easy for the doctor to repair this. So if the patient chips a tooth, they can just come back in with some resin and reshape or add to the tooth if they chipped it. Say they don't like how sharp this canine is, they can come in with a little bit of resin and come in here and reshape that and cure that into place and change the shape of the tooth. Or if it breaks later on, it's very easy to repair this material. So when you're getting ready to polish it, if you need to do some aggressive contouring, you can use this bristle brush and go in between and just lightly polish in between these areas. Um, this will contour if you push hard enough. You don't need to push hard and you don't need to go fast. But just go into these areas and polish up until you get the shine you want or contour. If you want to add some horizontal imbrication lines, you can usually accomplish them with something like this bristle brush. As we know, Flexera has some unique properties. It's two times more resistant to moisture than some of the leading products on the market. So we wanted to put it to a test and test it with a couple different solutions soaked in over a one hour, five hour, and then 24 hour. One being a diet soda. Diet sodas we know can be very acidic to our teeth and we wanted to see does it stain the teeth as well. Since this material is two times more resistant to moisture, what type of effect does a diet soda have? Next, we're going to test Flexera in our regular coffee. Coffee is something that everyone likes to consume, especially our morning coffee drinkers. We wanted to see how this product holds up against coffee, which tends to be the main reason natural tea stain. So we will test our dentures now and see how they hold up against coffee. Let's see how Flexera holds up now when soaked in a beet solution. This is 100% pure beet juice, and why not add a couple extra beets to the mix to make sure our color is extra strong. Now as we compare our three different dentures that have been soaked in diet soda, beets, and coffee for a 24-hour period, you can see diet soda and beets really had no impact on staining. 
The coffee, however, there was subtle changes in the color, just a little bit of a warmer hue. That was 24 hours soaked in coffee though. So realistically, who's going to soak their dentures in coffee for 24 hours? That's not very likely. Overall, very impressive results with Flexera tested in solutions over 24 hours. You can see the two times more resistant to moisture really plays an effect as we have no staining to very little staining from the beets and the soda and very little staining from the coffee when soaked over a 24 hour period. One thing that makes this product so unique is the long chain chemistry. Flexera has this unique long chain that really gives it added strength. And in comparison, it's three times more fracture resistant to some of the leading products on the market. We know that dentures fail for several reasons, stepping on them, being soaked in the wrong solutions. So we wanted to put it to an additional test. So we put it to a test with stilettos, high heels. What better test to see, can it hold up against these fancy shoes? But we live in Utah, so we can't forget our snow boots. And let's see if Flexera will crack under pressure. As we know, there are a lot of reasons for failures with dentures. Some misplace them, some lose them, some step on them. But one key reason for failure is our dog. So I brought a very special guest here today that I'd like to introduce you to, our family dog, Tahoe. And he's going to help us test Flexera to see how it really holds up underneath a dog's bite. So believe it or not, dentures often fall victim to man's best friend. Maybe it's an attraction to saliva or simply the comfort of an owner's scent. As we attempt to study how Flexera held up as a dog's new chew toy, enhanced with a little bit of peanut butter, we were unsuccessful at gathering bite marks, but rather successful on a new product line for doggy dentures. Thank you for joining me today as we test some of the new products on the market with 3D printing, as we test Flexera and look to enhance natural beauty. Be sure to check out their website, Desktop Health, for additional products and material. And be sure to follow us on social media with our new center, Capture Dental Arts Health and Beauty Center.